The Center for Social Justice has presented its analysis of the 2022 to 2024 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. In its analysis, the federal government committed a total of 11.6 trillion naira into debt servicing, while 8.31 trillion naira was expended on capital. Uh, expenditure between 2015 and 2020. A breakdown of the amount shows that in 2015 and 2016, 953,620 billion naira and 1.475 trillion naira were spent on debt service, while 1.841 trillion naira and 2.20 trillion naira went into the same line item in 2017 and 2018. Looked at the revenue performance in the previous years, revenue and expenditure performance. Um, we noted that uh, we've never met the targets we set in terms of revenue collection. We've always had a situation where our projections have been overly optimistic, except for the oil revenue in 2020, where we got so down and made the budget benchmark so low that at the end of the day, when it moved beyond 20 something or 30 and went into about 40, it appeared that oil revenue was more than projected. But overall, we have not been able to meet the projections. We also looked at debt service, uh, which was 13.2% more than projected. Then the first five months of 2021, prorated expenditure, uh, there was a shortfall of 44.6%. Why prorated revenue, uh, we did uh, uh, a shortfall, a variance of 14.2%. But that service exceeded the prorated by 30.1%. So in essence, you can see the picture, the background of the what we have done so far in terms of our targets and uh, meeting them, revenue and expenditure. We looked at the economic growth projections and uh, we saw a situation where we are supposed to hit it out big in 2022, grow by 4.2%, relapse a little to 2.3% in 2023, while moving up again to about 3.3% uh, in 2024. We are not particularly happy about the projections because they don't seem to be logical. Although we understand that the baseline for 2021, which is the first full year after the recession and the pandemic will be low, so there's expected to be a jump. But that quantum jump in 2022, if it happens, it means the trajectory of growth uh, should move on rather than decrease. Oh, a picture of uh, our debt uh, stock as it stands right now. Let's bring in our Rise News analyst, Dr. Sam Amadi, who, of course, is an associate professor at Bayes University. Thank you. Dr. Amadi, for being here tonight. Uh, let's take a look at the fact that in the past three months, we saw our debt actually increase by 7.1%, and now we're at about 35.5 trillion naira as it stands. And of course, this new debt plan that the president has submitted the request to the National Assembly, should we be worried? Well, we should, but essentially, the president's argument is that they're trying to uh, kind of fit in into the already approved expansion in terms of uh, what they can borrow in the fiscal plan they gave and uh, the argument has always been that look you have crunch revenue from oil especially the mono economy you have the pandemic you have uh, of course uh, um, under productivity which the minister have said so several headwinds probably means that the deficit is growing in terms of if you look at the 2021 project this is not even enough to service the uh, the deficit in terms of revenue and expenditure. So essentially they provide that argument. Again, some people argue that, for example, the euro bonds aspect of these debts help banks to also raise their own mm -hmm. bonds. So in a way it's not lose-lose uh, as a case might. But again, if you look at the fact uh, around debt to revenue ratio and it's expanded, that's partly what, uh, like if you look at the figure from Asian uh, if you're using 11 point something trillion to do debt in a particular time and you're using 8.1 for um, for um, uh, uh, for for capital expenditure. It means that you basically the infrastructure is not available. So so primarily we should worry how much the debts we are incurring more debts and therefore the servicing ratio will keep growing. If you look at the stimulation by uh, status sense, they show that in 2020, 2026 
the level of your, your ratio to the, the, the amount of revenue we used to use to service the debt will be so much mm -hmm. that perhaps there was so much shrinkage. So the logic of borrowing is that you're going to invest in infrastructure. But then if the debt ratio is going high, you spend more of your revenue dealing with service. We're at 98% as it is right now. Revenue. Our revenue yeah, at 98% is being used to at service and our debt. And problem is also utilization of this fund. So apart from borrowing, the National Assembly oversight around budgeting and budget management is very key because if you borrow, even if it's for infrastructure, if, if you complete those project pro program on time, if you borrow for infrastructure and they're not completed and those money get to be misused, then it's double whammy. That means you're going to be paying yeah. the servicing. You are also not getting the, the spillover from infrastructure investment that will help you go the economy, increase revenue. Because if you increase revenue re re relative to your debt ratio, then you are in a better position because you will not be having the kind of where we use 98% to service debt. So that's well, really what we should be worried. Okay. Um, the ordinary Nigerian is probably worried, you know, that look, okay, uh, government is borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. Where is the effect of the borrowing, you know, on the economic growth of the people? And again, secondly, how do you reconcile these borrowings with the concessioning by the federal government of certain roads infrastructure to attract the PPP? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, first is that if you look at the debt also profile, it's covered that states and local government are also slightly, even though the federal government has more. But again, so the question is, even if the federal government is prudent, how about the subnational government? So our f kind of federation and the way we nationalize the economy, but we don't nationalize the implementation pro program creates a mismatch between you know, the debts you are getting and the fact that you can monitor their use. Okay. The second point is that essentially the citizens are not feeling the impact or may not feel the impact if you don't align policy making, change some of the socioeconomic policies that ensure that the poor don't get value. For example, if you look at the U.S. Um, um, uh, unemployment uh, uh, debt ratio or even a spiritual profile, it shows that a lot of poverty got less because people got a lot of transfers from government. Now, some of these debts and the investment are not getting to those who need them, even in terms of services or allocations or who is c capturing the contracts. So, and the policy around contracting is such that this investment may not drive down poverty. So that's a problem. But again, on the total issue around should you be borrowing where you are trying to um, concession, concession it's basically the question will be the government cannot leave out public financing of infra infrastructure, even as they are concessioning. By the way, the concessionaires pick the most profitable easy to execute of those projects. But government needs to drive the, the bigger public the entire growth, process. which will uh, enable more production. Mm. So mm. even as a concession, which makes more managerial best business sense, but the investment, some of the public uh, uh, infrastructure may not have ready market for concession in, in the short to medium term. So public investment continues, but the question is how you expand the revenue, are you borrowing money? Even if you borrow, people argue, you have to yeah. borrow. Some say even print money. But the point <laughs> is efficiency. Are you going to invest smartly? Are you going to ramp up the, the investment, the infrastructure uh, projects quickly so that over time, in short to medium time, before these debts get to That's quite critical because yeah, the absolutely. debts are really not a bad thing because the U.S. is one of the highest debtors in the world, but we see them borrowing for specific projects that are able to pay back. But let's look at the fact that the DMO, that's the Debt Management Office, they're actually raising a concern about our debt sustainability. But with all of this, how do we ensure that the borrowings do not amount to excess debt burden, especially for the future? Absolutely. And that's the argument for equity. The point is that why should we overburden the future generation? So the social justice aspect is that debt is always a problem. You have to, sustainability is about the future. So you, 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 we saw how much we struggle to pay off our debts. The and now we are acqu acqu debt, acquiring yeah. more debt. So what you do is first that, first, the first, that's what the National Assembly contemplates. They have to ensure that the projects you are using the money for are bankable, the cost benefit is very high in terms of benefit, and they are sustainable such that in the future, when these debt burden are heavy, then the revenue profile has in increased much. You can pay off, and then they have mm. the multipliers in mm. terms of economic well being for the people. Thanks so very much. Uh, what a wonderful place to drop the anchor there uh, associate professor sam amadi i think i just uh, said not, yeah. not on base university <laughs> again because uh, you belong to the abuja, abuja strategic school, abuja uh, school of policy, school of policy. Yeah. yeah 
Noted. <laughs> Thank you so much.